In this video, we'll be showing you how to create a virtual machine backup job using Veeam Backup and Replication. In our example, we'll be using a VMware vSphere virtual machine, but Microsoft Hyper-V is also supported. In addition, you could back up Windows and Linux physical machines using the agent. We will also touch on where you can configure backup modes like incremental and reverse, application-aware processing, and indexing. Let's take a look at the demonstration. To begin, on the left menu, we'll select Home, and then above Home, we will select Jobs. Once we select Jobs in the window, you'll have the option to click on Backup Jobs, and in the drop-down menu, you'll see the option for Virtual Machines, Windows Computers, and Linux Computers. This time, we're going to use Virtual Machines and VMware vSphere as our option. This will open up the window that we can use to configure the backup job. The first step in a new backup job would be to give it a unique name. For this example, we're going to use Lab Backup, and under Description, we're just going to type Test. From here, we can select Next. In this step, we will be adding the virtual machines that we would like to include in this backup job. So, on the right, we will select Add, and this will give us the interface that first shows us hosts and clusters, as well as the host beneath it. When I select the arrow to the left of Veeam ESX, this will expand and show me the resource pools that are stored within that host. If I expand these resource pools, now you can see the virtual machines that are held within each one of these resource pools. In the upper right-hand corner of the Add Objects menu, we can select different views like VMs and templates. When I select this view and hit the drop-down menu, all I see is virtual machines. The next option in the upper right hand corner would be data stores and virtual machines. Like the name says, if I do an expansion, you will see the data stores first, then the VM stored within each one of these data stores. The last option would be for tags. When I select this, if I had tags set up, I would be able to select them here. For this example, we're going to use the host and clusters view, and we're going to back up Tiny Veeam. Now, another option you would have to find virtual machines if this environment had a lot of virtual machines to choose from is go down to the search bar. And in this example, I'm going to type in tiny, hit the search, and now I can see anything that has the name tiny in it. And we will select tiny-veam and click add. Once the VM is listed, I can select it. And if I had multiple virtual machines beneath, I could use the up and down buttons to the right to move them up and down in the order in which I would like them to run within this job. Let's go ahead and select Next. Under Storage, at the top of the menu, we see Backup Proxy. If we would like to change the automatic selection, we can click Choose, and from here we have the additional option of Use a Selected Backup Proxy Servers Only. So in here we can control which backup proxies we're going to send this job through. I'm going to select Cancel and move on to the next, which is the Backup Repositories. In the drop-down, you'll see multiple options for different repositories. We're going to leave the one that was there originally, and then move on to the next option, which is Configure Secondary Destination Job. This is for backup copy configuration. If I select the checkbox, you'll notice an additional option appears over on the left side. This is called Secondary Target. If I uncheck the box, it will disappear. Again, if I check the box, I now have the option to configure those backup copy jobs. We're going to uncheck it and move on to the next Advanced. In the Advanced menu, you'll note that there's a lot of tabs to choose from. We're going to focus on the Backup tab because there are other videos in the How To series that will go into more detail on these additional tabs. So let's go back to the Backup tab and focus on this content. The first option under Backup Mode is Reverse Incremental. The second option is Incremental. This option will include Forward and Forever Forward Incremental options. Beneath, if we were doing Forward Incrementals, you would have the option to select Create Synthetic Full, and then select Days so you can choose which day you'd like those Synthetic Fulls to be executed on. Select OK and move forward. Below, now we can see Create Active Full Backups periodically. And again, once we select these options as well, we could go over if we selected weekly to the days option and see the same options we had under synthetic. Now, if we uncheck both of these boxes, this will fall back to forever forward incrementals. So, once again, if I check either one of these, I will now be using forever forward incremental. 
So let's go ahead and select OK and move on to the next menu. The next feature we'll look at is Enable Application Aware Processing. One of the reasons to use this is to take advantage of Microsoft VSS or Volume Shadow Copy Service to be able to grab in-flight information and commit it to the disk before the snapshot is taken. Now, if we check the box, we'll see now that we're able to select applications. In the Applications menu, we see TinyVeeam and any other virtual machine that might be part of this job. So let's highlight TinyVeeam and select Edit. And then here you'll see first the General tab. The first option is for Application Aware Processing. And we have three options beneath that we can select from, which is Require Successful Processing, which is recommended, or Try Application Processing but Ignore Failures, and last, Disable Application Processing altogether. Next we have Transaction Logs. This is going to be more toward database information capture from memory to the disk. Let's see how they defined it. Choose whether this job should process transaction logs upon successful backup. Additionally, it says log pruning is supported for Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. The two options included are process transaction logs with this job, which is recommended, or perform copy only. You'll see SQL and Oracle have been broken out into separate tabs, which means we can manage the transaction file capture for each one of these platforms in a separate way if we choose. Let's look at file exclusions next. In this menu, you have the option to disable file level exclusions, or you can exclude the following files and folders, or include only the following files and folders in separate menus. And as you can see, it's very easy to follow. Next, we have scripts. The require, ignore, or disable options are really controlling below the Windows pre-freeze and post-thaw scripts and Linux pre-freeze and post-thaw scripts that you can inject into these backup jobs within the operating system. Let's go ahead and click Cancel and then select OK. The next step will be to configure the guest OS credentials we'll be using to execute the processes during the Enable Application Aware processing. So here we're just going to select the administrator account and move on to briefly cover Enable Guest File Indexing. So we can check the box, click the Indexing button. Here we can select Tiny Veeam, and then when we select Edit, you'll see the option for Windows or Linux Indexing. We'll select Windows, and in the options we'll see Disable Indexing, Index Everything, or Index Everything Except, or Index Only the following folders. So let's move out of there and then move down to the bottom where we see the guest interaction proxy. The guest interaction proxy is the server we're going to use to gain deeper access inside of the operating systems. If we select choose, you'll see that we can do automatic or we can actually prefer the following guest interaction proxy server. And you can see the list below that we could select from one or many. Let's cancel out of that. And now we can select next. Under Schedule, we can check the Run the Job Automatically and then choose Daily, Monthly, Periodically. Pretty simple to understand, as you can see. We also have the Automatic Retry option, and below that, you will see the Backup window, which Terminate Jobs if it exceeds the Allowed Backup window, which you can configure here under Window. So let's go ahead and select Apply. Now we review the summary, and we can select Run this Job. When I click Finish, and then click Finish. Now we can select jobs in the left menu and over on the right side we'll see that lab backup job. Currently under status it shows zero completed and then in the next row we don't see anything listed yet. Now if we go down to the bottom and select running we can also see this job because it has begun. It's still over here it says zero completed. If we look at the bottom under actions we can watch each one of these take place step by step in order. This is a great place to make sure that everything is functioning properly or if you have any errors. As things begin to complete, you'll see them show up in the bottom. Here you can see more steps. And when it exceeds the size of that action window to the far right, you will see a bar that will allow you to scroll. Thank you for watching this demonstration and make sure you check out more of the how-to videos in our series.